Paul, could you briefly point out the uh, glycol loops for the um, geothermal system? It's similar to the solar system, but uh, sitting right next to it and coming into the um, heat pump. Absolutely. This is a, these are control units. Uh, these are pumps, rather. These pumps um, pump a glycol fluid. You can see uh, they actually, this would be um, the entrance into the heat exchanger in the bottom of the geothermal. These come up to these pumps. These pipes right here actually exit the room. Um, and this is a horizontal um, uh, uh, geothermal system. What they, the homeowner did during the construction of this house, um, actually before the construction of this house, installed um, uh, quite a, a, a long trench several long trenches in their property in their backyard before it was landscaped where the um, the geothermal contractor um, installed polyethylene pipes um, they they're usually between a hundred and six hundred feet long the trenches they um, are between five and eight feet deep so in other words they are deep within the soil and what happens is that these pumps um, circulate fluid out into those trenches uh, deep underground, which of course were filled up and now are landscaped. Um, uh, so there's no impact whatsoever on the landscape um, once once they are installed. Um, they either draw heat uh, from the earth, which in this case in the heating season is probably steady 55 degree water. Um, our content, the, the circulation loop as it returns, has absorbed uh, heat to, to reach the temperature of the earth out there, um, which is a very considerable amount of energy that this uh, geothermal unit then uses, uh, extracts that energy with a heat pump and heats the house and rejects uh, some heat, uh, particularly in summer, into the uh, hot water system that I just described. Um, the, in the winter, uh, I'm sorry, in the summer, in the cooling mode, it actually uh, takes heat out of the house through a normal heat pump, uh, heat exchanger inside the unit, um, and then takes that heat and heats up this coolant and rejects it into the ground. So it's basically an identical uh, operating system. Uh, I'll just explain really briefly um, the path of water and how we kind of tied in the geothermal system to it. Um, geothermal systems come standard, almost all, uh, all, all different uh, models now, come standard with a de-superheater. And that's just a fancy word for um, a, uh, uh, a loop that is accessible to the homeowner to take extra heat that is not needed to heat the home or in the summer the heat that's actually pulled out of the home for air conditioning and inject it into water which the homeowner th can then use as domestic hot water. So what we've done is uh, we've set a tank here which is circulating with the excess heat from the geothermal and this is the first point of entry of cold water into the house. That's where cold water enters right here. If the geothermal has heat um, to uh, contribute to this first uh, storage, because this is eventually all going to be hot water that the uh, homeowner would use. If the um, if the homeowner uh, if the geothermal has heat to contribute, it will. It's in a closed loop. It's taking uh, water. Um, as, actually, it's it's taking water out of the top of the tank right here. It's bringing it over to the geothermal. It's collecting any heat that it may have and injecting it back into this tank. So this tank actually has no energy, outside energy source. It doesn't have electrical, it doesn't have gas. It's simply a storage vessel. So cold water comes in. It may or may not be preheated by the geothermal. The geothermal will actually reject a lot of heat into this water during the summer and sometimes during the winter. Uh, as it is today, it's very cold outside, but it's still working really well. Um, the, uh, um, uh, the water, if, a, if the homeowner turns on a tap uh, in the house asking for hot water or a dishwasher, uh, any, any use of hot water, cold water enters the tank, hot water or, or any any temperature increase in that water provided by the uh, geothermal is going to reside in this tank. That water is then going to exit and it's going to pre-feed the solar tank. 
So instead of having cold water coming into the bottom of the solar tank, which would be typical for us, um, we are preheating that water with geothermal. The solar portion um, we hope to heat uh, even uh, above the temperature of the geothermal with our collector and we have it stored in a 120 gallon tank. Then as a last resort, this tank also has an electric element which is energized and so uh, all of the hot water going to the home exits the top of the tank into this anti-scald valve because it's possible that with both of these heating units we actually exceed 120 degrees. So we certainly haven't used the thermostatically controlled electricity uh, element in this tank. Um, but what we do install, as all solar thermal systems need to have, is a, an anti-scald valve which would mix cold water with excessively hot water in this tank um, down to 120 degrees or whatever you have it set at. Um, typically 120 degrees is considered a safe temperature to distribute throughout a home. Um, and this of course is the final distribution point to all the hot water within the house. Um, so it's, uh, um, it's essentially what could have happened of course is that we could have just had hot water, I mean cold water come in, the electric element turned on, hot water coming out and feed the rest of the house. Um, what we chose to do instead, what this homeowner chose to do, is to integrate some very effective renewable energy technologies to, um, uh, to add content, to add potential heat to his hot water. There will be many times when he will require no energy whatsoever from outside the home to uh, heat the hot water that he uses for showers or dishwasher uh, or dishwashers or clothes but there may be times when uh, he will need uh, to uh, use electricity to provide uh, some of his hot water needs um, and of course from the homeowner's point of view um, when he turns on the tap, tap he'll have hot water and that's what we term a system that um, uh, doesn't demand lifestyle changes from the homeowner but utilizes very effectively uh, energy sources to reduce his purchased energy uh, from the utility company.